The Shark Deck. I'm Jenny Mack with your daily comedy news. In the second half of today's podcast, I'll speak with Darcy and Jer. I didn't know anything about them until the interview came up and I did some prep and then talked to them for like half an hour. They were really fantastic. That'll be in the second half. They are the hosts of Just for Laughs Montreal's New Faces creators this afternoon. I, I continue to encourage you to listen to Mark Marin with his guest Jim Gaffigan. Like I did yesterday, I'm going to read an excerpt from the transcript that I created and I'll do some minor voice acting. Acting. I'll read Marin's lines a little harsher. Mark said, we're different types of performers. Like uh, we, just last week, I went to dinner with Mulaney, Kroll, Spade, Jessenick, Joe Mandy, you know, and I never hang out with anybody outside of comedy clubs. And, you know, it's just a show business storytelling thing. And I realized, you know, I'm talking to Kroll and a couple of the guys there are talking about doing Vegas. And I'm like, I never think about doing Vegas. Like if I'm going to Vegas, like now there's a little club off the strip that seats 200 people in the arts district. I'm like, I'll go there. But no part of me thinks they're going to like put a poster of me in the casino and people in that casino are going to be like, I love that guy. I'm not trying to do a Mark Maron impression. I don't have one. But he speaks a little more harshly than Jim Gaffigan, who said, see, I disagree with that promise. Also not doing a Jim impression. I think you totally would. So you do. You see, this is just insecurity. Yes, I think, well, you know, we've been doing this so long for like 25 years. You have that information that you're applying to today. But my question would be, would you enjoy it? Well, I feel like these types of pressures, you know, because I still do comedy in my own way and I think I'm okay with it. I have people, but I I watched your special last night. I'm getting a lot of laughs, but I realize, you know, your discipline around how you do your comedy, your ethic, your work ethic, it's very much like the thing I notice the most. Because I've watched the last couple specials. I always watch the special. You know, all your jokes are equally as good as the last, right? And you don't think in terms of big closers, just like someplace around 55 minutes, you're like, all right, and you walk off. But that to me is like, it's beautiful because that's the specific job. It's like, I've given you enough. Yeah, it was all pretty solid. I'm going to go. And you know, like, this is the job for me to wrench out an hour and a half or two hours over a year. And I do that. It's like life or death. And I'm desperately trying to be like, you know, why can't I just lighten up a little bit? Jim said, right. Well, that's what I mean. It goes back to our initial thing. Like there's such a joy in putting out a special and a sense of completion, but also why can't there be enough? Like for me, for a while there, I was putting out a special a year, but I was like, There's the joy in doing it, but why does it have to culminate? And the business is always shifting. Like when we started, people weren't doing specials or performing. Marin said, everyone wasn't doing specials. They were like, they were still special. I'll pick up that thread tomorrow. Speaking of specials, Sean McLaughlin has a new special on the 800 Pound Gorilla YouTube channel today. It's called So Be It. The Just for Laughs New Faces Creators Showcase is today at 1 o'clock. Caroline Banowich is an actor, musical comedian, and viral content creator who is currently full-time at Barstool. She also created the Barstool sketch show, Please End This. Interesting. Cliff Benfield is an animator and comedy writer who has a social media account, Space Skits. Last summer, he made waves with the premiere of his Adult Swim small series called Indolent Alien. He successfully completed a series of comedic shorts for Bento Box. Next up, he'll do a short series for Funny or Die. Sounds like Cliff's got it going on. Heather Chalin creates a relatable content about every aspect of her life. People are drawn to her authenticity and unique way of putting her opinions and life experiences into bite-sized songs. Via her unique POV, natural comedic voice, and musical talent, she's accrued quite a following on both TikTok and Insta. Devin Gant performs as part of the New York sketch comedy team Young Douglas, is a digital editor for Vice Media, and an assistant editor with SNL. Leo Gonzalez has become a favorite face among mainstream talents on music and entertainment red carpets, from appearing at the Grammys to hosting events for Warner's. With roles in upcoming film and TV projects, collabs with the biggest stars in music and TV, features with professional sports teams, and a steady string of viral hits, he's become one of the most important rising stars in Hollywood. Sounds like the Pablo sister wrote that paragraph, not for nothing. 7 o'clock tonight, New Faces Characters. Chris Caffaro is the performing and managing director of Uncle Function, one of New York City's premier sketch comedy troupes. Parker Callahan is a regular fixture of Chicago's underground comedy community. He's toured with Second City written for Cards Against Humanity, and performed for Paul F. Tompkins' Variatopia, Carl Foreman Jr. is the voice of two characters in the Comedy Central sitcom Fairview. Chris Kleckner is a main company member of the prestigious Groundlings Theater in L.A. That is a no-joke credit if that's off your radar. Take that seriously. Evan Mills is currently starring in the Second City's 111th main stage review called Don't Quit Your Daydream. He also co-created and wrote Queer Eye, the musical parody. Hannah Pikes debuted her sketch show Princess Party at the 2019 Edinburgh Fringe Festival, a Second City Conservatory graduate. She has acquired over 400,000 followers for her character-driven comedy videos on social media platforms like Vine. Sorry about that. And Instagram. 
Last year at Fringe, she did her one-woman show, A Woman on the Verge. Lauren Ramoso has amassed over a million followers online with her hit characters German Mom, Italian Dad, and Girl Who Just Got Back From. She's taking her critically acclaimed solo show, Francis, to the 2023 Edinburgh Fringe this summer. That's cool. Her debut special, Diane, became the first solo show to ever win the Toronto Sketch Comedy Festival's Best of the Fest Award. Very nice. Susan Song has performed sketch comedy on Mod Nights and original characters on Characters Welcome. Chloe Trost will be seen in the upcoming feature film Sweethearts for HBO Max and the Please Don't Destroy movie. Nice. She performs with her sketch improv team, A Crazy Amazing Friendship, and with sketch team Lisa. Also today at 9.30, New Faces Unwrapped. So these are even newer, newer faces that haven't been grabbed by uh, agent types yet. Clara Blackstone has performed alongside Jenny Slate, Adam Conover, and Chris Gethard. If you're a fan of chain-smoking trans women with absurd jokes that are darker than the circles under her eyes, you're in for a treat. Good paragraph there. Liz Blank loves to take awkward situations and make them just a tiny bit more awkward, illustrating her experiences involving teaching high school, dating, and other horrific moments through a comedic lens. Aldo Campana, 19 years old, based out of Phoenix. He writes jokes about his upbringing in the city and learning the ropes of becoming an adult. He enjoys skateboarding, weightlifting, and goldfish crackers. Amina Amani is known for her appearances on Inside Amy Schumer as well as Hulu's late-night TV show Up Early Tonight. I'm not dissing your credit. I didn't know Hulu had a late-night TV show called Up Early Tonight. Is that a thing? (laughs) I went to upearlytonight.com, and what came up was this experience has been removed by the publisher. Uh, Seems like it was a show in 2020. Oh, here's an article. Up Early Tonight is the new late-night show for moms. What was this? Ah, Scary Mommy, that's an entertainment brand for moms, has teamed up with Huggies for a new four-hour late-night talk show. All right, a little paid product kind of thing. I'm not dissing your credit, but all right, tap the brakes on Hulu's late-night TV show up early tonight. Iban Kulkarni, stand-up comedian, writer, and improviser based out of Brooklyn. His work has been featured in comedy festivals across the U.S., as well as some of his friends' podcasts. Again, this is unwrapped. These are people starting out that somebody just for laughs went, hey, these guys are good, including Neil Linsky. In addition to stand-up, he's written and acted in several viral sketches and short films. I love the lack of credits. It's endearing. Max Mantikoff, known for his wildly popular street talk comedy, He's been seen on Amazon Prime's Basement Yard with Joe Santagato. I knew Joe had the podcast Basement Yard. That's on Amazon now? Okay, I mean, they filmed it and it exists on Amazon. It's not quite the boys. We got to relax with our credits here, folks. We're stretching things a little bit. Johnny Mac has worked with people like President Obama, Jerry Seinfeld, Jim Gaffigan, Dane Cook. You know, all right. Yes, I have, but relax. Lucas McCrary is originally from East Tennessee. Now based out of Austin, his stand-up was featured on Netflix's 20-somethings. He's worked with numerous headliners, including Tim Dillon, Maria Bamford, and Brian Simpson. Wellington Ojukwu made his television debut on Fox Station Laughs. He's also been on Stand Up National Live from Zanies. Bianca Parado is out of Austin. She currently produces three weekly comedy shows, making her the top independent showrunner in the city. Filterless confessions about her life's experiences are winning over audiences from all walks of life. Hi, I'm Mark Francis and host of a new podcast, The Messy Effect. Join us as we take you into the exciting new world of Argentine soccer phenomenon, Lionel Messi. And his new life at Inter Miami will bring you into the glitz, the glamour, the star-studded events, along with the exciting journey to a new world of U.S. soccer and international football with news and stories three times a week. Come along for the ride as Messi, Miami, and Major League Soccer experience the journey of a lifetime. Get the Messi effect wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Erica, one third of the podcast Books and Betches, a comedy book podcast where we swear, spoil, and we talk about. Whoa, whoa, you cannot say that in this. What do you mean? That's our slogan. It's our gimmick. How about we just give some examples of things we talk about? Well, there's a lot of chaos. I'm Kristen, and with me, I have. Whoa, no. <laughs> A lot of sidebar conversations. Are you here. denying the existence of Juber You know what, Erica? Yes, I am. <laughs> you can listen to new episodes of the Books and Betches podcast every Tuesday morning, anywhere you get your podcasts. If you'd like to support the show, easy thing you can do. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube so I can monetize this thing. Go to YouTube, go to the Daily Comedy News podcast page, hit subscribe. You don't have to listen. You're already listening. So that's cool. I just want to get to 1,000 subscribers. That's it. Appreciate it. 
Today, at Just for Last Montreal, at 1 o'clock, it's New Faces of Comedy Creators. Your hosts are Darcy and Jerry. I'm going to talk to them in a second. Judy Gold will do her podcast at 2 o'clock. 4 o'clock, Airplane Live All-Star Cast Read. Love this. JFL celebrates the 43rd anniversary of the film Airplane. They're going to read select scenes from the original script. Your cast, Jack Whitehall, Sashir Zamata, Craig Robinson, Brad Williams, Joel Kim Booster, Chris Shockwave Sullivan, and more surprise guests. That sounds awesome. Dino Archie does his podcast at 5. Ali Wong at 7. Zarna Gag at 7. Russell Peters at 7. Judy Gold at 7. The Just for Laughs Eat My Shorts Film Festival at 7. New Faces of Comedy Characters at 7. Jessica Kirsten at 7. Britannic at 7. British at 7. Tom Pop at 7. Foil Arms and Hog Hogwash at 7. Ronnie Chang at 7. Wow. 7.30 Best of the Fest. 7.30 Surrounded. 7.30 Steph Tolev. 8.30 The Lucas Brothers. 8.30 Vigo Vin Club Comedian. 9 o'clock River Butcher. 9 o'clock Nath Valvo. Uh, Nath is the guest on tomorrow's podcast, and I like Nath a lot. 9.15 Mark Rebelay. 9.30 Giggly Squad Live. 9.30 The Bald and Beautiful with Trixie Mattel. 9.30 Daniel Sloss. 9.30 Carlos Bayarta. 9.30, Marlon Wayans. 9.30, New Faces Unwrapped. 9.45, Best of the Fest. 9.45, Russell Peters. 10 o'clock, Surrounded. 10 o'clock, Adira Amram and the Experience. 10 o'clock, Rosilla Carlson. 10 o'clock, Gina Yashir. 10.30, Arthur Simeon. 10.30, Donnell Rawlings. Midnight Surprise at Midnight. Mae Martin at Midnight. The Improv's 60th Anniversary Show at Midnight. Zach Zucker presents Stamp Town at Midnight. And Ruben K. Live and Intimidating. Another day of tough choices. I'm telling you, this festival is fantastic. If you still have time to get up there this weekend, go. Otherwise, go next year. All right, if we were there, we would definitely hit that airplane thing at 4 o'clock. That sounds fantastic. All right, we got to pick an early show here. Oh, let's do British. We haven't done British yet. I love seeing the British comedians. That's one of the shows I like to hit every year. Featuring Alan Davies, Jeannie Shear, Josie Long, Jamelly Maddox, and Ruben Kay. Hosted by Jen Brister. That's always a great show. So let's do British at 7. 9 o'clock, let's do Nate Valvo. Right now I know you're like, who's Nate Valvo? Trust me, by the end of tomorrow's podcast, you're going to be like, that was a good call, Johnny Mac. Plus, uh, my advice to all of you for these comedy festivals is, you know, you don't always want to go see the people you've heard of because you can watch them on Netflix, right? So bounce around and try some new things out. So we'll do Nate Valvo at 9. Probably too tight to catch a 1030 show. If we did, uh, probably Donnell Rawlings is the move there. And then at midnight, you know, Midnight Surprise, May Martin, The Improv, and Stamptown and Ruben K. I'm going to pick The Improv's 60th anniversary show, hosted by Mark Normand, and it features Leanne Morgan, Donnell Rawlings, Felipe Esparza, Neil Brennan, and a special surprise guest. I have a feeling the guests will be quite strong at that one, so that's what we will do. The New Faces Creator Series at Just for Laughs Montreal showcases the best new comedic voices who are writing, performing, directing, and producing content. The hosts this year are Darcy and Jer. I was unfamiliar with them before Just for Laughs offered them to me, and I love them. I'm recording this just after speaking with them. I went like half an hour, double the time that was allotted. Uh, Really cool. So after just three years of creating content online, they have a combined over four and a half million followers across platforms with an average of 50 million views a month. Let me tell you about them a little bit. Darcy Michael is an actor and stand-up comedian. He had a role in the Canadian TV sitcom Spun Out. He's a traditional stand-up that segued into TikTok. And if you're a regular listener, you know I I roll TikTok a lot. But when you hear this conversation, I was like, all right, these guys are pretty cool. So how Darcy segued from stand-up into the TikTok universe, they have a golden retriever named Yuma, and you'll hear the story at the end of the interview. But uh, long story short, uh, they posted some videos of their golden retriever, and they did really well. And they're like, hmm, but I'll let Darcy tell the story at the end of the interview. And I'm going to leave this a little loose. So when I do these interviews, I just hit record so that we're up and running and I do the interviews. And then after the fact, I go back and I do intros like you're hearing right now. Uh, But I'm going to not cut this one up. You'll hear why I started talking about a bug bite I got and it was officially pre-interview, but I'm leaving it in. You'll hear. Here's Darcy and Jer. Love them. Hey, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Actually, I'm not great. I went for a run today and uh, something. Well, that was your first mistake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> something bit the back of my head. So I'm fine, except for the stinging in the back of my head. I don't know why so, I opened with that, but hi. <laughs> so if your throat starts to close, we'll make, we'll, sure, we'll make sure we call we someone. We'll call someone and say, hey, John in New Jersey bit by something. We're in trouble. 
<laughs> and I'll, I'll, if, if something really bad happens, I'll tell the family to let you guys have the video. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was like, it's a typical comedian. We're like, is this going to affect the press? All right, let's start with the big topic, Barbie or Oppenheimer. Ooh, this is a tough one. I, we're split down the middle. Cher's going to be Barbie. Yeah. I'm going to be Oppenheimer. I was waiting. I'm like, if you yeah, no, are yeah. Yeah. Yeah, going, <laughs> yeah, no. uh, we'll do both. But we have yet to decide which one's first. Now I'm excited. I'm doing Oppenheimer in about uh, an hour and a half. Really? Oh. Yeah, my son wants to go. He's college age. And I'm like, since when are you into World War II historical dramas? But it was his idea. I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I think it just comes down to the to the beautiful filmmakers. But yeah, it's going to be it's interesting. As a union member, I'm always like, oh, should I be going? Should I be waiting? Should I be? But those are two. They're two. I can't. I actually can't wait. To see. So segueing into content creation, I want to ask you about that. Let's talk about feeding the beast. So even with my little basement podcast world, I went out of my way to throw Barbie in an episode title. And what do you know? I'm getting more downloads than ever. But talk to me about that whole game. So just to catch you up, I've been in radio 30 years. I, I teach a college class. And over the years, I've explained to uh, the students how I'll have to just hold my nose and do content that you know, maybe I don't want to. But uh, the right play uh, is Barbie. So sure, let me keyword stuff. Right. And I, it's a we, fine balance. It's, yeah. We don't do, we don't play the game of, uh, of what's hot or what's not these days. Like we have them for a couple of years. We've just basically been like, what, oh, we put out what entertains us and in hopes that it finds the right audience. And we've been for, sometimes, yeah. sometimes it doesn't entertain them. Sometimes it still entertains us. Yeah. Uh, we do these long form episodes on YouTube and we're like, we lose money on YouTube. <laughs> But we still do it because it's, we look at it going, okay, in 20 years from now, we will be able to look back on every trip we ever took because we've got these 20 minute episodes every week on YouTube of our touring, of our travels and stuff. But we're like, man, they're considered flops when you look at the views we get everywhere else. But I don't care because of like it's content we enjoy. And it's a nice time capsule. Yeah, no, it is for sure. Did you start out playing the game, for lack of a better term, and, and evolve absolutely. once you had enough critical mass? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I was really, like, we I, we took off on TikTok early when, during the pandemic, but I was very much what hashtags are trending, what topics are trending, like, how do I, how do we get in there? Where, what's our spin on What's it? our spin? That was the biggest yeah. thing was, like, if something was trending on TikTok... I'm like, where's the funny in this trend? What can we do that just is a little different from what everyone else is doing? And now I'm just, we're so much lazier now. I believe they call this resting on our laurels. Is that the term? <laughs> we're just on a little small break. Yeah. <laughs> I think we filmed something for... We haven't p filmed anything for two weeks. We just finished the first leg of our tour and we're just fucking tired. Do you have a team helping with all these videos or is it YouTube grinding? If we we grind it all. We have an editor for YouTube. Again, that's why we lose money on YouTube. But I, I am a. I we're both kind of control freaks, yeah. and so we're like the time it's going to take us to tell someone to do what we want, we can just go and do it. I totally understand that. At a different life, I was out. I was the boss of Comic Con Radio, and I had yeah. my. And I had one of my assistants, he's okay, here's the plan for today, this. And I'm like, why don't you just run that plan? Because I know what I want the edits to be. We flip roles. Then my boss came by and he's like, why are you editing tape? And exactly what you said. I'm like, I know what I want. It's just a million yeah. times quicker. I'll just do it. I'm not too good to edit. That's the thing. Like I, we come up of a, at a time, like I always go to our website for the longest time. I, we couldn't afford someone for my comedy website. So I went onto YouTube and taught myself HTML coding to build a website. And the same, we did the same thing for editing. We're like, we can find the, all the beauty of Darcy's ADHD is he can hyper fixate when he needs to learn something and it saves us money. And for the longest time, that was the motivator was like, Hey, we're not making a ton of money all the time. So let's teach ourselves how to do this shit. And then now that we know how to do it, I'm like, Hey, let's keep all the money <laughs> and continue to do it. Mind you, we are struggling this year. We do have to, we both are, we really hit a wall with bandwidth. So we're trying to be like, like we hired an assistant that does like more of the business side of things for us. Cause it's just, you know, we don't have time for everything. And when it comes, I would way rather spend all my time on creative 
Well, it appears you've got a lot of brand deals, which presumably (laughs) pays the deal, pays the bills. Is is that person doing that or did you guys develop all that and hand that off? No, we have a team for that side that we've got. Yeah. When we say we don't have a team, I think that's more on the creative because we have 14 people on our, just on the socials. They're not doing our pushing for us. No, but like we've got the social team. Uh, the management team and then the touring team. Yeah. Um, so the, the, but the social team handles all the brand stuff. And then our manager, uh, Kaylee oversees everything. <laughs> now that we really think about it, we do have quite a few people working <laughs> for us, but I'm the one editing. I'm the one posting. We don't, I, I like fans to know that when you see a reply in the comment section, a lot of people assume it's our assistants or our socials. It's us. Like yeah. if you get a reply or if you get a like from one of our comments, it's Jared and I that are doing it. And I think that will always be the case. I said that yeah. from the beginning. I was like, I want them to know because I know what it's like when I get a reply from someone that I look up to or someone that I in the industry that I, and I'm like, oh, my God, was it actually did Lizzo like my comment? Was it actually Lizzo? And was it Jennifer Coolidge? Yeah, no, uh, yeah. When Jennifer Coolidge followed us on TikTok, I was like, "Oh my god, is that actually Jennifer Coolidge?" It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you said that up great, uh, yeah. Darcy. Uh, going from comedy, stand-up comedy, to this, and presumably that's driving around show to show in a used car, uh, hustling, oh, yeah. and now you've got a team of fourteen. Uh, that's just got to be a great transition for you. It's a dream come true. We talk about it in the new tour, but I quietly quit stand up in 2018. I just stopped because I was like, I can't keep doing this. I've worked for 18 years in this country. I've been like, I've done everything that I could do. I had a sitcom. I filmed multiple specials. I did just for laughs every year and I just, nothing was changing. And, and then this silly little app came along and did something that none of the, the other things could do. And that was find an audience. The algorithm was like, Hey, where are the gay stoner dads out there? And (laughs) where are the housewives that want a gay best friend? And I have found it. And yeah, it's changed. Like, I like to joke that you just needed. (laughs) Yeah. He he likes to take all the credit for the career because he's, (laughs) it turns out you just needed a wingman, but uh, it's been the added, the thing we say all the time is the attitude is gratitude these days. Cause we like, we're, Hey, we're having the time of our life, but also it's just, it's, we don't take it for granted either. No, like, we know, we know it could go. <laughs> We've been in the industry long enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, but we're really you know, like, I think it's also just like, who doesn't love the every man story of, you know, going from nothing and becoming something and bringing the fans along for it. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm having the time of my life. And all, you know, like even in the show, that we're touring right now, there's one joke that I had said to Jared was like, my dream was to always do this joke from my, one of my specials in front of a thousand people a night. And this is the first time I've had that opportunity. So I was like, I don't care if people have seen this joke before. I, I have an opportunity to do it for a thousand people a night. I'm doing it because I want, it's for me. It's my, like I worked hard. It's a special moment of the show. Too. It's a special moment of the show for sure. It's a full circle thing. And but I always use a reference for that, that if you go to a music concert, you're expecting to hear the greats. Yeah, so hit. why it's a lot of your other hell is just the difference is the fans don't know it's a hit. <laughs> never heard it before. <laughs> but we know. Yeah, it's pretty great. I'm pretty great. So that's awesome. So there's 5,000 guys who were 18 years in a comedy, didn't cross over, and are right there shaking the fist at the clouds going, Dude, this guy's a TikTok comment. This is bull. Yeah. I, I saw 20 years ago, I saw that happen to Dane Cook, whatever you think of Absolutely Dane. Absolutely. Right? He's just a MySpace comedian. No, he figured it out. He was smarter than you were. He started yeah, hustling yeah. and found a court. Like I remember being mad at Dane Cook. Oh, you know, like, interesting. I, okay. I remember being jealous of that and starting a MySpace and being like, man, if I had... 20 grand to invest in, into marketing and stuff. I would do the same. I'd be in the same boat. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you break into the industry. If you're getting butts in the seats, that's the game. That's it. You've done it. Any other way, if you've got people that uh, we always say, Jar and I work in the currency of time. People are choosing to spend their time, with us, whether it's online or in person. We live in a 
finite world of time. There is only so much of it. So if someone decides I'm going to take my time to spend with Darcy and Jer, you can, don't be jealous, be inspired. Uh, Jer, you yes. were not traditionally a performer and now I he still is. I'm, so how's this I mean, whole ride been for you? You're up on stage, you got a thousand people staring at you. It's wild. I feel, I do feel a lot of guilt because I didn't have to go through the trenches that most uh, we, we like to through. joke the, yeah, the story to interrupt, but there are talk about angry comedians. Jer's eighth show ever on stage will be at Just for Laughs. It's <laughs> the eighth time. Yeah, there's going to be some angry folks. So I do, but I also have a lot of imposter syndrome when for it comes sure. to that. But you've but, earned it. But it's, at the end of the day, you just got to trust in the writing. Yeah. Trust in <laughs> that I couldn't do it without him on stage with me, leading me through it and trying to derail me through the show. I really love to go off script. That's my favorite part of what we're doing. Oh, but so it's, it's just, just like, when it's a lot of fun. I'm having the time of my life. We had no idea that I was going to do well. It was great. He's doing great. But no one's doing what we're doing. And that's what I love. But we've been together for 20 years. And every night I look over at him on stage. And I'm like, like <laughs> you're on stage with me. This is. I'm just awesome. as shocked. Yeah, it's great. We're, I love it so much. He's so bad, it's great. What I, do, I keep saying to him, I was like, do not get polished because you will take the magic away from this show. You have to be the level you are because that's what makes it so real for us and for the audience. I'm a legacy radio guy, and as I put together teams, I always say, I quote The Rock, know your role, know who you yeah. are on this team. So yeah. for you guys, know who's driving the car and know who's coming in and just kill, get out and pass yeah. the ball back. It's so important. Yeah. It's for, totally for us, it's, I gotta, I'm the, not for a lack of a better term, but the straight man. Sure. Yeah, you are. Oh, it's the hot. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> have you done Montreal yet? I've never been to Montreal. So okay. this is my first time experiencing any of it. So yeah, I'm just, you, I'm circling back to what Darcy said about the haters. It's going to happen. I remember, I think it was, maybe it was JFL Chicago. I was walking up with my midday host at Sirius was a guy that went by Mark says hi. We got out of the car and a relatively famous comedian with a semi-successful podcast walked up to us and was like, who are you? And I like, I'm Mark. Yeah, but why are you hosting the show? No, no, no. It was just like insanely jealous. So you're just doing a job with like oh, a yeah, competition. Yeah. Why are you attacking us? It's so funny. We always say it's not a pie. It's not a pie. It's again, it. There is room for everybody to entertain and also quit taking your job so seriously. We're slinging jokes. Like <laughs> all Jared and I want to do is make feel, make people feel joy. And if that is something you're against, then maybe you need to it, it look a little internal as opposed to I've never been jealous, even with Dean Cook, for example, I was never jealous. I was just get lit a fire in me where I was like, if he can do it, I can. So I always say to people, I'm like, if you're experiencing jealousy, you're experiencing motivation, inspiration, use it. You are very easy to talk to. Let me get to the just for laugh stuff before the publicist murder me. Yeah, and, uh, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> so I, every year I go up for the new faces, the stand-up ones on the Wednesday night. I, I've never done new faces creators. Now I have the notes in front of me and I can just read it. But what is creators? Like, I get it. Guys, I'm we... thinking, what is can I'm we be honest? Like, I'm, I'm a new face. Yeah. We, we <laughs> joke that her new faces, they picked two of the oldest rundown faces to <laughs> run it. From our understanding, we can't give away who is on the show yet. Uh, you're going to see some of the creators that are coming up in the industry with online content creating. They're directing, producing, writing, starring in their videos. They're doing what Jer and I have done for three or four years, and they're some of the best. And it's I don't know. I, this might be the first year that they're doing it, but it's a, it's about time because the industry across the board has ignored what is happening online for the longest time. And they've started to really be like, oh shit, like these people actually are holding audiences. These people are selling out theaters across North America and they don't have, you know, you've got, I think you, I look at the streamers are taking notice that well, even the networks are starting to take notice. a little late in, but Hey, that's fine. Like you've got like, you've got content creators that are making millions of dollars a year without management. And I love, that. yes, I love that there's the artists are in control. You've got artists that are trending on billboard top hundreds that don't have labels attached to them because of content 
because of places like TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and stuff. So I think if anything, this is the beginning of what will become a huge part of comedy festivals across the world because people want that. We're seeing it every night when we go on the road. People want to come and celebrate their, the people they're enjoying online. Ask a teenager, right? Not that our fan base is teens, but if they're more excited about meeting Tom Cruise or Bryce Hall from TikTok, they're going to lose their minds seeing a TikTok. We oh, noticed that even in South by Southwest last year. Oh, yeah. When people were running up screaming my name, I was all like, y'all know there's real celebrities around us. <laughs> yeah. Why are you running to me? <laughs> I was in Melbourne walking across the Anzac Bridge, random drop there, but my... 15 year old son is, oh my God, it's so and so from Vine. And I'm on Old Man Mountain going, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, what? You're well, look excited at, about that dude? Look at Bo Burnham. He was Vine and now he's just considered like a great comedic artist, but the industry ignored him while he was on Vine and they've made the same mistake for the last few years with TikTok. I am, it's, this is the most excited I've ever been to Just for Laughs because I've never once had more meeting requests. And I think this is my 12th or 13th time at Just for Laughs. And I've had more meeting requests from people going into this. And I've said no to the ball. Oh, I'm like, I don't really? meet you. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to have fun. Yeah, he's, he's set up. I'm, like, I'm, I'm getting the full experience. Just for Laughs is <laughs> a summer camp for comedians. I can't wait to go out and celebrate with them. Just see some good comedy. What will your actual show be? Is it you guys riffing between clips and then we all stare at the video screen? Like, there's no video element. It is full stand up. It is for the creator show. Oh, for the creators. For creators. Yeah, for creators. Yeah, the creator show. Sorry. It was like our second. No, the creator <laughs> show is going to be showing highlight reels of those creators. And then Jared and I are going to do a uh, sit down uh, interviews with them. Okay. Talk to them about the art of creating their process. And also what, like, who they're enjoying and stuff. But it's really just going to be... Yeah, like, we want to know what their ultimate goals are. Yeah. Where they want to bring their creation. Because it's going to surprise you. Some of these people don't... They're not interested in network TV. They're not interested in doing live shows. Because they want to keep the control. They want to keep the control. And you separately, you're doing your own show up there. I was just looking at the schedule. Yeah, we're doing uh, our No Refunds tour. We're doing our 90-minute show uh, at the Olympia Theater. Uh, And then... I've got another panel that I'm doing as well. When I go see you, what is your live show like? Oh, it's weird. It's chaos. <laughs> it's, it's wholesome. It's, it's wholesome and yeah. wholesome adjacent. No, it's stand up. It's very much a autobiographical story of our, our relationship online. So we talk a lot about, we talk a lot Inter- about mental, mental health which means a lot of the people in the audience are mentally ill. Uh, <laughs> and, and we celebrate it. It's a real mixed it's bag. relationship. Yeah, our, our, our parenting, like we're... Jared and I are a couple of old hags. We've got a 24-year-old daughter. We've been married for 20 years. Like, there's not a lot of people with our story. And so we found, like, that there were holes missing in our story for people online. So we thought, what better way to fill them in with a wild night of stand-up? Well, I think everything we're talking about here, however you deliver the content, it comes down to the audience is connecting with, lack of a better word, the talent. You are the talent, yeah. right? But it's that personal connection of, oh, I want to spend time with these people. No, it really is. It's a fine line with parasocial relationships because when you're watching someone on your phone, it's we call it the FaceTime effect, where you actually feel such a close connection to the person when if we're talking directly to the camera, the person on the other end, feels like we're talking to them. So we try to like balance that fine line because we also want people to remember that we're not friends. No, it's a, even in radio, I've seen over the years, you'll run into a listener and they'll be like, hey, how's your cat Fluffy? And you're like, how do you know about my cat Fluffy? The answer is yeah. because in 1998, at 6.02 in the morning, you said the cat's name once. Yeah. And you have these super fans. I can only imagine with what you do as opposed to we were in I Dublin know. and we had people coming up asking where the dog, who was looking after the dog. People who was asking for the, yeah. who was, where the plants are and how our trip to Greece was. Like it was wild to us to be like, we went to, when we went on this Europe trip, to be honest, we went thinking we were going to be anonymous. We were thinking, oh, we'll have a bit of a break, a little bit of anonymity. And it was getting off the bus in Athens. The first person we saw in Athens. Just for a photo. So cool. I, I try and, to on these segments 
not to ask the thing that probably 9,000 other people have asked you, but maybe I did that anyway. Oh, but since you mentioned the dog, okay, how's the dog? <laughs> She's great. She's, great. <laughs> She's so good. She's going through a diet change. So all Jared and I do is talk about dog shit. We'll be like, how was her poop? Was it okay? From, from diarrhea to almost pick up a bull. So <laughs> a few more days and we think it could be good. She's the light of our life. Yeah. We wouldn't be here without her. We literally, like, I don't know if we're running out of time or not, but really quickly, uh, the only reason we started a TikTok channel is because I had one for the dog when she was a puppy and she went viral and I got jealous. And I was like, my four month old golden retriever has a hundred thousand fans. And I've been doing this job. Talk about using jealousy to light motivate. a fire and to motivate and inspire. He didn't post on her account until we passed her. I didn't. I was like, <laughs> screw you, dog. You're not getting a single post until we have 101,000. And so we always joke, but it really is. I look at her all the time and I'm like, you gave me my career back. They are Darcy and Jer. How cool are they? And they're hosting New Faces Creators today at Montreal Just for Laughs. New Faces Creator showcases the best new comedic voices who are writing, performing, directing, and producing content. Just for laughs, press people, thank you so much. All these interviews have been awesome. I'll speak with Nath Valvo tomorrow. He's hosting New Faces International. But that all is your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow. Hi, I'm Mark Francis and host of a new podcast, The Messy Effect. Join us as we take you into the exciting new world of Argentine soccer phenomenon, Lionel Messi. And his new life at Inter Miami will bring you into the glitz, the glamour, the star-studded events, along with the exciting journey to a new world of U.S. soccer and international football with news and stories three times a week. Come along for the ride as Messi, Miami, and Major League Soccer experience the journey of a lifetime. Get the Messi effect wherever you get your podcasts.